We are now looking at alkynes. Alkynes have a triple bond. And uh, in all these examples, we only have a single triple bond. When we only have a single triple bond, um, the formula is going to have uh, this formula, CnH2n minus 2. So if we add a ring or a second triple bond or a double bond, this will change. Um, these examples are showing the different ways of representing compounds also. So the formula, molecular formula, molecular formula is not sufficient because it includes a lot of isomers that we can have. So then we can have a um, you know, expanded formula, um, a more condensed formula, or a skeletal formula. Uh, so these three can show the individual isomers of the um, of the compounds. So we're going to go through them, show uh, the uh, process of naming them, and so the smallest one we can have will have to have two carbons. So a triple bond is between two carbons. So uh, C2H2, so we're going to have uh, the double bond, uh, the triple bond between the two carbons and a hydrogen on each end. The skeletal formula would just be three lines together. And the um, formalistic name would be ethyne. So uh, uh, two carbons would be an ethyl group. Uh, the formalistic name has a Y-N-E on the end of it. The common name for this is an older name, uh, acetylene. So it has an E and E, so it's, uh, it's confusing unless you know the common name, um, acetylene. So we go and buy acetylene for torches and that sort of stuff. Uh, but it, its formalistic name would be ethyne, showing that it's an alkyne. We have. Um, Three carbons here. Uh, three carbons, it doesn't matter where we put that double bond, they're in the same position. So if the double bond was on the right side, we'd be counting from the right to left. So because there's no difference, we can get away with this column. This is propyne, uh, but it's okay to use one propyne also. Uh, so the skeletal formula would be the triple bond. So the skeletal formula is showing uh, the bonds between carbons. It doesn't show any hydrogens. And if we have any other uh, atoms present, like oxygen or, or halogen, we have to show this specifically in the skeletal formula. Uh, so it's showing the triple bond and the single bond. Triple bond and single bond. Going up to one more carbon. So four carbons. Um, if the triple bond is on the first, so as we number these, we're going to number them to get the triple bond to be the smallest number possible. So it would be one, two, three, four. So the carbon starts with the first, uh, the triple bond starts with the first carbon, so it's a one butyne. And um, up here we're showing the um, First bond and second bond is being straight because the triple bond is a linear bond. Uh, but once we get to the second, the third carbon here, uh, this is a sp3 hybridization, so its bond angle is 109.5 degrees. So we show them as being bent here. So if it was a double bond, that'd be 120 um, degrees. So it'd also be shown as being bent. But the bonds on both sides of the triple bond are linear, so we show it that way. But starting with the um, butyne here, we have now our isomers of where that where that triple bond is going to be in the molecule. So um, it can also be between the second and the third carbons in the molecule. So this would be the skeletal formula for it. So. Uh, between second and third, we always number it with the first um, carbon. So this is a two butyne here. Going up to five carbons. 
we have three ice worms that we can have here. So having five in a row is going to give us a pentine. Uh, the triple bond starts with the first carbon, so one pentine. So in the skeletal formula here, you know, we get number one, two. So uh, we're going to have a carbon at the end of the triple bonds, and then a carbon at each bend thereafter. So three, four, five. So that's our five carbons there. So that's our one pentine. Uh, two pentine, we start off with carbon, where it goes from single to triple, that's another carbon, triple to single, another carbon, bend is a carbon, and the end is a carbon. So it's between two and three, so that's our two pentine. Then here, there's not just one line of carbons now, so uh, we showed over here, we can see that we have two methyl groups coming off of this carbon here. So we number them, we have uh, one carbon, two, three, four. And we could put four up here also, but we can't get more than four carbons in one row. So we have a, a butyne. Uh, we're going to number so that uh, the two bonds, the lowest number possible, so we have a one butyne. So that puts our side group here, which is a methyl group, on the third carbon. So we have a 3-methyl-1-butyne. So that's how we number our substituent groups. And this will work for uh, other uh, substituents like hydroxyl groups or uh, halogens. Going up to uh, 6 carbons. <clears throat> I found five isomers for six carbons. So starting off with just uh, a straight line with the choke bond on the first carbon. So that's a one hexane. Again, we're going to count our carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, six carbons there. Up here, again, a straight line. So one, two, three, four, five, six with a triple bond between two and three, so that'll be our two hexane. Straight line again, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're between three and four, so this is a three hexane. This is the highest we can get, counting from the other, the other side, one, two, three, still a three hexane. But uh, if we go up to try to do a four hexane, then it really becomes a two hexane. So we count from the right here, one, two, three, four. So there is no possible of a four hexane because we just count from the other side and it becomes a two hexane. And then we can rearrange some of the um, um, carbons here so it's no longer one chain. So we have um, one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to have a pentine. The triple bond is between the second and third, so it's a two pentine. The fourth carbon has a side group, methyl, so it's a four methyl two pentine. And the last one for this example. Our longest chain that we can get is four carbons, so it's a butyne. Triple bonds on the first, between the first and second, so it's a one butyne. On the third carbon, we have two side groups. They're both methyl groups, so it's a dimethyl. We have to give the number for both of the methyls. So it's a 3,3 three, three dimethyl 1-butyne. So this is a short introduction to our alkynes, how to uh, name them, and the different types of ways of drawing our alkynes.